how to achieve sustainable growth while maintaining entrepreneurial spirit. We have big dreams for this company. We are not here to present our one or two year solution for just one problem, but instead we want to propose a 2020 vision that's going to help us achieve global market share, global market revenues, and global market stability. Hello, my name is Fernanda. These are my teammates, Paulina, Alan, and Pamela. We're representing them. So let's take a look at this afternoon's agenda. First of all, we're going to see in, uh, with a bit of numbers what uh, Saputo's current situation. Number two, we'll present our 2020 vision. Then we're going to identify the competitive advantages that are going to be the basis for our strategies, which are next, and finally Q&A. So where is Saputo standing right now? Saputo is a company that has 12,000 employees. Its operations are divided in two, dairy, uh, dairy products, which are mainly cheese and whey protein, and grocery products. However, dairy operations account for 98% of the company's revenues. Um, what kind of revenues are we talking about? These are 7.3 billion revenues. Uh, finally, we should take into consideration that U.S. represents 42% of the dairy production. So, Saputo may be a company that has presence in over 40 countries, but U.S. Uh, contribution to this company is huge. So, we believe that Saputo has yet to exploit fully its global potential. How are we planning to do this? We envisioned a five-step strategy to achieve this. What do we want? We want Saputo to become the leading global dairy company with an important focus on product innovation. Step number one, uh, we propose uh, the acquisition of two more platforms so Saputo can meet the, the demand of the global market. Step number two, we propose that Saputo should continue with its current acquisition strategy. They know how to do it and they do it well. So they should uh, acquire more companies in US Can and Canada organic and dairy. Step number three, it's our greatest ambition. We want Saputo to become a leader organic producer. Why? This is a, a huge emerging trend and with potential for growth in the next few years. We want to attack US, Canada, Europe, and Oceania. Why? Because these, uh, these are the markets that are gonna have the most growth. And finally, Taking into consideration that Saputo is a very entrepreneurial company, they should exploit this capability by the creation of a social responsibility project. So, to formulate any strategy, it is very important to know where you are and where you want to be. And to see if you're going the right way, it is also very important to have metrics. That's why we decided to use revenues and EBITDA as the metric. As you can see, in the last five years, the compound annual growth rate was 7.6% in revenues, and we want it to be 4.4% from 2013 till 2020. Also, the EBITDA was 10.4% in the last five years, and we want it to be 8.7% in the uh, our 2020 vision. This is a very ambitious yet viable goal. So to achieve our goal, it is important to use our co currently competitive advantages, which are efficient operations. They have a shared sense of discipline and accountability, and they know how to do this, so they should continue with this advantage. The second one is the high quality of the products. It's maximize efficiency while minimizing cost. And the third one, third one is the solid financial foundation which can help them achieve its strategy of acquisition. They are very strong. They have 60, 646 net cash and low levels of debt. Now Alan is gonna walk us through the first step of our strategy. Thank you, Paulina. So like, as Paulina just mentioned, uh, Sapporo has a lot of, of, of money in available cash flow and uh, low debt levels. So the first step in our strategy is to continue with the current model, which is growing by acquisitions. What we're proposing is that Saputo has four exporting platforms all over the world. We, we think that they should acquire two platforms in selected countries and, and to increase market share and process in emerging markets. 
So today they are operating in Canada, the US and Argentina. But only they only export from uh, the US and Argentina. So to get the, the four uh, exporting platforms, we need two, so two more locations in order to achieve this. Uh, during 2013, the European plants were closed, so they no longer have operations in Europe. So we, uh, we are missing two locations for the exporting platform. So before we, we give our recommendation as to where these, these platforms should be, let's take a look at the dairy industry in the world. These are projections for 2020. And as you can see, the blue bars are growth, uh, they are uh, estimated growth up for the demand for dairy products in the world. So we can see that China, India, uh, the Middle East, and Africa are very attractive markets. So we would have to choose uh, locations that would help us meet these markets, put a specific, uh, a specific focus on these markets. But apart from geographical location, we also need to meet these five criteria or, or other four criteria. First, uh, we need to look for countries with uh, low raw milk price. This is very important. This is what took Sapporo to Argentina in the first place. Then we need to, to look at a positive market uh, uh, the a positive dairy market long-term growth, the geographic lo location, like I just mentioned, the quality and the know-how of the employees, and a uh, low barrier of entries for the country. So our suggestions for this four-platform system would be the US and Argentina, which they already have, and another one in Australia, and another one in an Eastern European country. Uh, it would be, have been a couple of months ago, it would have been a bit easier to decide which European country <laughs> we could uh, suggest. The Ukraine has a very attractive uh, raw milk price uh, cost and very good infrastructure, but both the political landscape today will tell us to wait and see how the situation unfolds in the next months to see if we could uh, make a final decision. So this is what it would all look like by, 20, by 2015. We would have the US operations exporting to Mexico and Central America, Argentina exporting to Brazil and other South American countries and South Saharan uh, Africa, and our new platforms. One in Australia serving the Chinese market and in another Southeast Asian countries, and the uh, Eastern European base that will be serving the Middle East, Northern Africa, and maybe in the future of uh, Europe again. And that was uh, step number one. Okay, so continuing with the next step, our big ambition is to become organic. Why organic? Because in mature markets like North America and Europe, consumer habits are changing. The market for dairy products is very saturated, and especially in Canada, the strict regulations represent a limitation for this company. With, with an um, environment like this, Sapuro's only choice to achieve competitive advantages is through innovation. How should we innovate? For organic production. How are we planning to do this? Um, uh, we want uh, Sapporo to become an organic leader by the acquisition of well-established organic enterprises. Why well-established? Because the organic regulation system is a bit tricky. There are many uh, regulations that have to be met. For example, uh, having a grass free of fertilizer, having cows free of hormones, free of antibiotics. So we really need companies that already have this know-how and that uh, are already certified organic. In numbers, uh, the organic industry generates 64 billion US dollars worldwide. This is a trend that is growing in absolutely every part of the world, but particularly, particularly in North America, US alone accounts for 44% of the market share. So taking into consideration that Zaputo already has a very strong presence, already has a, a good knowledge of the market, the first step to start this strategy would be starting in the US and Canada. So we want to become global leaders in this industry where we want to start small. That is why we decided to start in Canada and the United States. Why Canada? The market is worth 3.5 billion and also since 2006 the consumption of organic food has, has tripled. Also, they, they have a very diverse consumer, and also 58% of all Canadian, Canadian are buying organic products every day. Regarding the USA, the US sales have grown 26 billion in the last 20 years. Also, the sales are increasing 9% every year, and they have a mass, the, a mass market retailers that sell around 54% of organic foods. So, this is an opportunity for us to 
penetrate this market because as you can see, 50% of the organic food and beverages are represented by dairy and eggs. And also yogurt products have an, an estimated annual growth rate of 5%. Now, this would be our next step, is the global organic expansion. So we will export our organic products to the top five countries in the world, which are United States of America, Germany, France, and Canada. All these numbers represent retail sales in millions of euros. This was our step number three. Now, Saputo has been growing through sales, through acquisitions. But what if we look at another way of becoming global? Let me introduce you to the research and development phase. With this, we aim to centralize the research and development operation into two main areas. In the first, we will develop innovative products for more mature markets. We're talking about low, low sugar content products, premium products, but especially organic ones, as my teammate just said. And the second one, we try to focus on the development on, of high nutrition products. Let's see. One of Sapporo's top strengths is the quality of its products. It makes some really good ones. But in the market, there's a problem, we could say, in the dairy industry. The quality of its product has been decreasing. For example, in China recently, they have been growing a little more of the regulations because of a New Zealand brand of dairy products that have been uh, making sick the community of China. So, the, let me introduce you the budget that will meet the financial expectations. We look through the competitor's budget for R&D, Nestle and Danone, and it usually goes from, 30, from 10 to 30% of their net profits. Given uh, Sapporo's current situation, we propose a 5 to 10% of its net profit to be on R&D department. Also, one of Sapporo's strengths is their people. They are high talented people, passionate people. That's why we want to put those kind of persons in this division. But we want brilliant people. That's why we want to propose an arrangement with the top universities. In the first division, organic food, as we have just said, we want Sampuro to be one of the top leaders in this industry. And the second one, high nutrition content products, we want to focus on the local needs. We want to give high quality products at a low price on low income communities. And these uh, divisions will emerge in a social project that will be explained later on. So that was step number four. So the fifth and last step will be to run a social entrepreneurial project. The objective for this project will be to create a positive impact in society by developing a product that serves the nutritional demand of communities in need. Uh, today, there's a, a huge, uh, most firms are riding the wave of social innovation, so we don't want, we want Sapuro to take its innovative spirit and use it for social innovation. How are we going to do it? First, we create simple community product facilities with easy industrial processes adapted to local needs. Here, we're referring to countries such as India or Bangladesh. We have been inspired by our competitors to to, to make models that work like this. And they actually employ local people and they uh, focus on products that improve nutritional standards for children. Uh, like I said, again, this is a good way that we could enter uh, markets like maybe India or, or Bangladesh or uh, underdeveloped countries in Africa. So this is our, our fifth and last uh, step. Uh, this has been a, our five-step strategy for, for Sapuro and for the 2020 vision that we have developed. Basically, we know that Sapuro has the right ingredients that can allow us to use the strategy, mix those ingredients, and actually help Sapuro become one of the top five dairy producers in the world and become a truly global enterprise. Thank you very much. Right, so can you go back to your global organic expansion slide, please? Okay, so let me ask you here a question, okay? So um, you want to go organic. What would be, in your opinion, the cost of producing one liter of organic milk versus a normal, less quality, or normal milk? And how much you would sell each for you to go get those growth? Well, we, we know that uh, making organic, it's uh, considerably more costly, approximately. So what's the, what's the ratio? 30%. How much? Like 30% more, more costly. 
we've got to in, uh, the revenues will also increase. So that's uh, obviously our first investment would be would have to be really strong. We are looking to acquire uh, companies of the range from uh, 200 to 600 million dollars. We have the of revenue, of oh, investment. No. Over investment. Yeah. So he's a financial guy. I haven't seen any numbers. Yeah, exactly. So, so if you would that impact the volume that you want to pump out, like uh, globally, for you to be able to become uh, the leader in, in selling organic milk? Because you can't produce the same quantity of milk organic versus the normal milk, which is full of vitamins and stuff like that, or chemicals to a certain point. So how, what is your ratio? Like, would like to understand your analysis. How did you get to the point that organic is the way to grow? It's is it profitable? Yeah, it is. Pro That's why we want first to acquire like strong organic companies, and we also made some numbers, and we realized that according to the numbers, we get we could sell around 150 million dollar in organic milk in Canada, for for example. So it's not that we want to be the organic, like the main, the main core business of Saputo, but it will be like a new, a new way of growing its revenue. It will. It's such a small number, 150 million versus seven billion. So yeah, that's just in Canada. That, that that number. We want to start here and then go globally. The market is really growing, and Sapporo has also invested in very small companies. The first company, one of the best first companies that I bought in the U.S., had one percent of the market and it didn't sell very much. But this is how they've been doing it. They acquire knowledge for the for the industry. The organic industry is very promising. So we want to. So what is your market analysis? That's what we'd like to know. Did you do that? Did you do the analysis for us to appreciate the growth? Yes. In terms of the of the organic, for example, in the in Canada. No, but I mean worldwide, if you're going to invest in the platform to do operations, right? You want to make sure you can expand that uh, platform. You, you're saying you want to pump in millions of dollars to develop that, but I mean, you can't just base it on 150 million or 3.5. You know, you want to go further than that. You want to go globally, right? Of course. So what is the global analysis? Did you do a no, market analysis? Right now, we, we only base on the local. And this is how they have been doing it before. They have been starting small okay. and then going more. All right, thank you. I want to ask about the research and development. The, what is historically, what has the company been doing, and how much of a cultural difference is this going to be to all of a sudden? I mean, I see that. You're saying some competitors are doing it, but those competitors, Nestle and Danone, are, are huge companies that have a lot more diversified product line than we do. What, what exactly are we, we're, you're saying we take 5 to 10 percent of our profits and dedicate them to R&D. I don't know if I'm missing something, but I'm trying to see how it's helping us. Well, um, we believe that even though the current acquisition strategy is a good one, it's not sustainable to for it to be its core competence in the future. So that's why, why we were like right now that we are in this acquisition, we start this project because eventually Saputo is gonna have to be a company that needs to bring innovation uh, from the inside. So that's uh, we, we obviously know that uh, well. Well, Saputo is a very big and successful company. That not in Nestle or you know it's, it's a different league. However, it would be uh, a first step in a right track to the future. Right now, uh, research and development is very it's, it's a small part. They they do have it. They have it in the grocery product line. They have pastries, and uh, the research and development mainly has been centered on on developing on uh, modifying a little bit uh, this this uh, small division, which is only two percent. So we would like to we would like to start uh, research and development to go big and to innovate in the in the main competence. Um, for your expansion strategy, you were recommending to go to Australia and Eastern Europe. Um, do you have an idea of the size of companies that you would be looking to acquire and whether um, how you're going to finance it? Yeah, <clears throat> Sorry, this will be around uh, from 30, 300 million to uh, around half a, half a billion dollars companies, depending on the on the market that they already meet and the level of sophistication that they have. But we have around 600 
million dollars in net cash. If we could use part of that and part of our low low debt to finance these acquisitions, it would probably take us about a, a billion dollars to have uh, both platforms. But we could tap into the Asian market and into the Middle Eastern market with lower costs because right now all those, those markets are being met from Argentina. So we believe that these are short and uh, this will shorten our costs. So profit expectation, and if you put these all your plans in place, how much? Again, didn't see any any profit expectations. So. We're expensive. That wasn't for us. Yeah, we have, we're expensive to grow ten percent annually our revenues with implementation of this trade. The problem is that today Canada is a very difficult market because of all the regulations, and since most of our profits are coming from <coughs> Canada, these, uh, these five steps would take us to this uh, to maintain this and improve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.